I want to discuss the idea of a probability distribution by referring to this particular example. The distribution of the hourly earnings of all employees in Ireland in October 2009 is shown in the diagram. It can be seen that the distribution is positively skewed. Now, positive skewness means that the dis distribution is skewed to the right. So the tail is to the right. We saw that in the videos on histograms. Same thing here. If the distribution had been negatively skewed, it would actually look like this. So it would be left-tailed. So the tail would be at the left. Now, all the hourly earnings are shown on the x-axis. So the hourly earnings for employees in Ireland in October 2009 run from x equals 0 up to x equals 80. Now, what's the meaning of this distribution? Well, it's the area under the distribution that has any meaning. The actual height of the distribution at, at some value of x is not relevant. Suppose we want the proportion of employees with earnings of 20 to 30 euros per hour. Proportion just means fraction. What, would, what we would do is go to our probability distribution and we go to x equals 20 and x equals 30 and get the area under the curve between x equals 20 and x equals 30. So we just go up vertically from x equals 20 and vertically from x equals 30 and get this area here. Now you might know from calculus that if this function is f of x, some function that we don't need to know, then this area in here is the integral from x equals 20 to x equals 30 of f of x with respect to x. Now we won't be doing any integration here, but that's something we could do if we knew the functional form of this distribution. Normally we do not know what f of x is. Quite often we're dealing with distributions such as a normal distribution, for example, which is bell-shaped and it's symmetric about the mean and median. And we just look up areas, we look up tables to calculate areas. So we don't have to know the functional form. Now, this is not a standard distribution that's tabulated, but you could imagine that if f of x was known, we could have these integrals calculated. And let's just say that this area here is one quarter. The total area under a probability distribution is one. So what we found here is that the proportion of employees in Ireland in October 2009 with earnings of between 20 and 30 euros per hour is a quarter, a quarter of them. Now we could give this a probability interpretation. What we could do is say that the probability of a randomly selected employee has or had earnings of between 20 and 30 euros per hour is one quarter. So we could imagine taking all the employees in Ireland in October 2009 and randomly selecting just one of them. So if it's a true random selection, it means that each employee is equally likely to be selected. So you could imagine a gigantic lottery involving hundreds of thousands of employees and we pick one at random. The probability that that particular employee had earnings between 20 and 30 euros per hour will be a quarter. So you should be well aware of these two interpretations. You can see that the actual value of the function at x equals 20 is irrelevant. So the length of this line here would be f of 20. That does not come into this at all. We're given that the mean of this probability distribution is 22.05. Now, like the case of histograms, which were discussed in other videos, the mean is the balancing point of our distribution. So think of our x-axis as a seesaw, and we, we have all this weight on top of it. And if we were to balance it, we would balance it at 22.05. The Greek letter mu is usually used to denote the population mean. So all employees in Ireland in October 2009 is a large population. So this is the balancing point. You can see that 
we have a lot of weight, say be, from x equals 10 to x equals 20, where we have we have much less weight, say from x equals 50 to x equals 60, but the weight from x equals 50 to x equals 60 has more leverage because it's further away from the mean. It's further away from 22.05. Now, the median is the value of x such that half the data lies below it. So 17.82 is about here. So half the data lies below 17.82. In other words, the area of the curve below 17.82 is 0.5. So this area here is 0 0.5. For any probability distribution, the total area under it is 1. So half the data lie below 17.82 euros per hour, and half the data lie above 17.82. What about the lower quartile? The lower quartile is the value of x such that quarter of the data lie below it. So quarter of the data is less than 12.8. 12.8 is about here. So if I consider this green area, that represents quarter of the data. So quarter of the data run from 0 to 12.8. So this area is 0 0.25. So I write LQ for lower quartile. It's 12.8, this value here. And the upper quartile is the value of x such that three quarters of the data lie below it. So the upper quartile here is 26.05 uh, that's about here so three quarters of the data lie below 26.05 in other words the area under the curve to the left of 26.05 is is three quarters or 0.75 which means that the area above the upper quartile the area under the curve above the upper quartile is 0 0.25 that tells us that three quarters of the data, or 75% of the data, lie between the lower quartile and the upper quartile. So three quarters of the data lie between 12.8 and 26.05. In other words, this area here is 0.75. And you can see 0.25 plus 0.75 plus 0.25 equals 1. I just want to mention the mode of this probability distribution. That's the value of x with the highest frequency. So basically we want to find the x value that corresponds to this point here, the highest point in the graph. We say that that's the mode. So that looks like it's about, it's approximate, well it's close to 20. I'm not going to write it down, but just, just to let you know that it's the x value of the highest point of our probability distribution. It's a value that has the highest frequency, but its actual frequency might be zero. I mean, we have a mode. Mode is about here. This value might might have no frequency. We should really be considering a, t a very thin rectangle about this value, a rectangle with a width of dx then the frequency is just the area of this very thin rectangle, which is approaching zero, by the way. So um, the actual frequency of a particular value is approaching zero, but for this particular value, it's not approaching zero as quickly, you could say. This triangle has the greatest area. It's the tallest rectangle with a width of dx. So this value here is the mode.